Welcome to Satisfactory, my name is Niklaus and as you can see today's topic is going to be something about trains and I just gotta say train tracks are tricky in this game. They behave in very weird ways but they also have a lot of flexibility so that is what we're going to be working on today. I'm going to show you how to build tracks in a proper manner so that you get nice clean turns both up and down and uh, do intersections and splits and all that kind of stuff and how to also signal them. What this will not be is like an extensive uh, train tutorial with everything that is part of trains uh, that we will not be talking about scheduling or anything like that but exclusively about how to lay the foundation the infrastructure to get the whole thing working. So if you find this interesting be sure to hit the like button if there's something I'm missing be sure to uh, let me know in the comment section below. And of course, if you want to be part of the construction of this awesome, awesome base, then come on over to Twitch where I'm streaming Tuesday, Thursdays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Central European time. So how do we get started on uh, the trains? Uh, the, not the trains, the tracks, because that's really the, the crucial part here. Now, first of all, uh, some things that you could already see as we're going in here with my train system, there is... I'm using right-hand drive. What you can also see is that I am building in the intersection of the foundations, not in the middle of foundations. That's just design choices that I've done because I want to make sure that my tracks are, as you can see out here, they are two foundations apart, like this, one, two, two foundations apart. And that makes it, I think, very nice and neat. And you can do it in a million different ways. And uh, if you want to choose to build them in the middle of uh, foundations, then uh, Everything else applies, just uh, the checkpoints I'm using will be slightly different. Instead of using the corners, then you will use the middle. So where do we start with this rail segment here? Well, I think we should start by uh, saying that everything I build is going to be built on foundation. That's the only way I do it. If you build in the wild, that's good for you. I'm not doing that. Everything uh, needs to have a solid foundation underneath, literally a foundation. The minimum length of these is about one and a half about one and a half uh, foundation, but I'm always using two because I, I like having things in neat blocks. The longest one is 12 and uh, one, what is really important is that you can, you can get, uh, you can make for example like this. And then if you want to continue it outwards and you go like, ah, that's probably okay, right? in order to get an intersection and then you'll just continue with a nice straight rail ahead. That actually looks remarkably straight compared considering the fact that it actually isn't straight. What we built here is now a weird combination. What I would say is if, if you want to make sure that you don't have wobbly belts, sometimes you get belts that should have wobbled back and forth like they've been uh, uh, taking heat during the summer. Yes, that actually happens then I would always prevent, I would always avoid building things on starting with a curve belt. Because once you start with a curve belt, then it might, that curve might be sort of oscillating into the next rail. And that, try to avoid that. Let's get into some of the more interesting things. You can see I've uh, colored some foundation here. That is because this is going to be used as our benchmark. The most important type of thing you can build is a corner. Because you're going to need corner well we did cover the straight rail so now let's do the corner if you have a three by three foundation block then you can get a very very nice crisp corner and you can actually go from here and go one two three one two three one two three one two three, one, two, three and go in again and that will be pretty close to a circle i'd say yep it is a circle of sorts and that's the minimum circle you can do that is really clean and intersects really nicely with uh, the rest of the world. And, oh, there are some small packages and big packages. Get that and get that. And you can then bring these out. These are, should not be wobbly, but they might actually be wobbly. So I would always start it the other way around. Start it from here. And move it into the curve. Try to always start from a straight line and go move it into the curve instead of the other way around. So now we have a 90 degree corner. We What we also want to do is, let's say you have this part and of course it's coming from this side, so let's try to do that. 
You want to make sure that there is a branch here that you can go over to, like something like this, and you want to branch your, your tracks. How would you do that? Well, my uh, recommended way of doing it is to take from here. Uh, that's actually really not a great place to start. Let's not start there. Let's start the other way. So what I'd like to do is take here and then go one, two foundations forward and go in there. And then go from... Again, this is important. I would not do it this way because I'm not sure that it will continue to be a straight rail. But if I make the straight rail... If I make the straight rail first... Let's make the straight rail there. And then go from here and in here. That is, in my opinion, the cleanest way to do an intersection or do a split. It gives you that nice distance of two apart if you want to do a stacker. <clears throat> By the way, you can't do stackers like you can in Factorio, so be aware of that. Uh, because the way that train uh, algorithm works. That is definitely a topic for a different train tutorial that gets much more advanced. In any case, uh, if, if the train was coming in from the side, it could go straight ahead or it could go into this intersection, which is uh, this segment is one two, two forward and one to the side, and then another one that's two forward and one to the side. And then we have a very, very clean, crisp split into the next one. That's pretty good. Another little interesting split that you can do, or a branch you can do, and uh, let's make this like uh, straight ahead, is one and a half and a half. That also is working. But the thing I'm, I found out is that it, it's not great. It doesn't lend itself to being like a diagonal because you can see that it's not hitting that diagonal and it's not hitting that diagonal and it gets more and more curved so this is you can use it as a branch i haven't really found a good use for it uh, because i think it's it has more problems than than it has solutions the next one is diagonal do you want to make a diagonal track well we start with having a segment here and then we want to make a diagonal track again i'm going to use this segment because i like this little module this uh, is basically like a curved track in factorio so Let's take that, and I start from one, two, and one to the side, but I am not building this one. It's very important that I don't build it. I'm starting here, and go. then I build the diagonal. The minimum diagonal that I can build is, well, in my case, if we're talking whole foundations, is two foundations by two foundations. So you can always, that's, what is that, 2.87, it's square root of eight. Damn it, why do I even start doing math on this? And then from here, you can link it in. And if you want to have it go this way, you can. Or you can also have it go that way. You can even have it go both ways. And then you have a nice little split here. And I, I think this is a very nice way of, of making go from one into two. Let's have a look at something. What if I build it here instead? That would still work and this one would still work. Yeah. Let's take this out. Here. So this is a good way of uh, you could do more splits as well. And straight ahead. So it could do a split here, could do another split up here, could take this one further up, and then get it curved in here or something to that effect. It gives you a lot of options, and uh, in my opinion, and this is of course my humble opinion, I don't really feel that there is a need for this extreme variation of the tracks when you're talking foundations, of course. Because if I have one of this segment and I have the normal segment, I, I don't really need. You can see that. Combining this segment with this segment, uh, this segment, you could actually make a really nice curve here. One, two, three, one, two. What? One, two, three. That goes from this one to that one. And it goes over here. It's not a curve as, as this one, but it, uh, it does go a clean 90 degree turn in one. Uh, let's, let's do it with this. One, two, three, one, two. So it takes the same space, and basically what I'm, what I'm saying is that it looks like you really don't even need the full curves if you just had straight segments and these segments. Then it would actually be possible to do all the things that I want to do. 
And now... Nighttime. Damn it. Tutorials are only supposed to be at the dawn, so I will wait until dawn and then we will continue. And the beautiful dawn is here, so we can continue with the tutorial. Now, there is an advantage to sitting here and looking at the same damn thing for eight minutes, and that is the realization that this is illegal. This should not be happening. This should not be possible. And I, when I built it, I was like, hmm, that's weird. I didn't think that was possible. So I tried recreating it and I couldn't recreate it. And then I made a discovery, a brand new discovery while I was recording this tutorial. And it's super amazing. Uh, so we'll come back to, we'll just uh, intersect that right here. So I hope you like it. What we saw is here. Let's uh, take this one. We know that this corner is good. Uh, I I kind of want to make sure that I eliminate all variables. So, uh, that is here. One, two, three. This one is just a straight segment. And I'll also get this straight segment here. I don't even know why I picked it, took this out. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, I think. There. Okay, so what we've, we lo know is that this one can be here. But what I also saw, we also saw is that I can go one, two forward and one to the side. Yes, I could do one, two forward and one to the side, but they don't match. And if I do it that way, they don't match. So how the hell did I build this one? Because that's exactly what I did. It's two segments. Now we do know that we can build it as one segment here and that works, but not as two segments. So the way that you have to do it is instead you take this out and then you start from here. This is a very specific case, but if you want it like that, then there is an option. You build a diagonal track, this connects, and this connects. And now you have, and this is the beauty of this, is that you have a checkpoint in here such that if you need to put a intersection here, you can do that. Or even more important, if you want to use this as a location for doing a split as we did before, then we now have that option as well in the middle of a curve, which we didn't have before. So I think, honestly, I think that is a pretty massive, massive thing. And it comes back to what I said about sequencing is extremely important. So if you start by building the diagonal and then hook up these two to the diagonal uh, checkpoint, then it will work and it'll be kind of the same as a curve let's have a look at how much of a difference of the curve there is this is the uh, the three by three curve uh, versus the one that is sort of leading into a diagonal first small difference but definitely a difference so the, we do it i don't think a lot of people knew this i definitely did not know that uh, maybe you did so let's go on to making a a side intersection and also a four-way intersection just to give you a sense of it now, before we go into that, I would say that I am not particularly keen on making four-way intersections. Uh, my experience from Factorio is that uh, four-way intersections, no matter how much you make it, they will always be a your bottleneck in, uh, in, in throughput-wise for trains. So I always try to make only side intersections instead of doing four-way intersections. So that's a bit of personal preference here. So what we've done is we have uh, indicated the size of this. I am leading my strict tracks through here. And then I want to have a sidetrack and I want all the combinations. Remember right hand drive. It goes very simple like this to start with. Those are the first easy ones. And then from here, you can go one, two forward on here as well. One, two forward from this one, two forward, one, two forward. And then you have all of the other check or all the other hook points you need. Was that too quick? I want to show you how easy it is to make one of these intersections. Actually, I think that overlapped. I guess you have to watch the tutorial again if you didn't get it. And that is a pretty damn good intersection. So let's uh, just take the straight ones out. The difference is I do the curve here. This takes three by three. And in order for the other curve to also work, then I shunt it in by two foundations and also here two foundations and then it's going to be the same curve you can of course also do it from here to here but it's not going to look good in my opinion at least this way it's it's just looking way better and then we complete it 
like so, and like so. And then the only thing remaining is to put in some some blocks, uh, some signals. Now this is where they, that is entirely going to be a different tutorial. So if you want it, let me know in the comment section, hit the like button, more uh, engagement means uh, more chance of more stuff coming. Basically you want to do a path signal on the way in and a normal signal on the way out. Pretty straightforward, at least uh, for, for now. That's the very, very easy way of, of saying it, what we want to do here. There. So that is a correct signaling of this area. And if we do this, then we can also know that one, two, three, four. Yeah, they, now, what I'm doing here is I'm just letting, letting the entire inner circle or in, intersection be one, be one block. That does mean, unfortunately, that it is not possible to drive straight through and straight through at the same time. At this point, I don't really care, <laughs> to be honest. But if this was a factorial intersection, there would absolutely be more signals here so that I could get it all the way through. This means that if the train comes from this side and another train comes from this side, they will block. So this is not an ideal, uh, it's not an ideal thing and we'll probably come back later on and, and make a better one but for now this this gets the work done and yeah I, I think you need to make it bigger if you want to make sure that it can it can do that sure so uh, let's move on to the roundabout interse intersection here I'm gonna make it into a roundabout I'm not a particular fan of roundabouts generally and we're gonna use what we just learned about the one two forward and one to the side and use that for a one there. I'll make, first I'll make the diagonal parts of this. You can see that it's now five by five in order to have more space. And I couldn't really make it smaller than this uh, and still will be very symmetrical. And that's kind of what I, what I wanted. And also follow like really stringent rules about how to put it in here. Now, here's another thing you can do that to complete the roundabout, but I want a signal in the middle here. And therefore I have to make a dummy. It's again, coming back to the idea about sequencing. This thing is not the same as that. You can see there's a clear difference between the two, but the main difference is that I can now put a signal on this location. And that's what I want to do. And because we link this to the diagonal, then we have the option of going from here out to that one from oops no that's definitely not what I wanted here into the diagonal and this one gets the again this is the, just a dummy to get this working and then we can remove it and as well over here It is sometimes worth just leaving it in, doing the same thing multiple times, so that if you are kind of unsure about what I did one of the times, then maybe one of the next times will make more sense. Whoops, there. Or it'll also allow you to catch my mistakes if I make any. There. So this is a roundabout right hand drive, comes in, can go around and come out. You can also just link it straight through but if, if this is the roundabout it is not actually a roundabout it's more of a square about i don't know uh if you want to signal this i would say that we would do it like pass signal on the way in and then a pass signal here come on there and then on a normal signal on the way up a pass signal here a pass signal and Pass signal and then also that is normal or block signal. They're not called normal signals, they're called path and block. Yeah. Get all of these in here. Come on, auto save. Yeah, put it in the right location. That one and here and finally. Then if I look at this, then we can see that definitely nothing in is even close to the four, uh, four color theorem, for sure. <laughs> they just went like, nah, we have plenty of colors. We'll use all 256 colors in the RGB or what is it? 
that's I remember, that's like back in the days. That was VGA graphics card. Remember that? Any of you old school? Here we have another, <laughs> and back to the topic at hand. So that's an intersection. Is it the best damn intersection you will ever see? I sure as hell hope not. But it. I would also try to avoid using it and use uh, the side intersections instead. What you also need to be aware of, the one thing I want to mention with, uh, with signals, from a block signal, this is a block signal coming out, until the next signal, this distance here, should always be the minimum, should always be at least as large as the largest train you have. Because right now, a train can come here and be allowed to go out of this block and into here, and then it'll park here, and then have basically its ass hanging into the intersection or into the roundabout, which will block traffic. So one of the things that you want to keep in mind from signaling, like the very, very, very easy one is like you make the change signal or the pass signal whenever there's a choice, like do I go this way or that way? And you make the block signal when it sort of comes out of a intersection where you go like, okay, when you go in, you have to either go out of this one or either I'll go out of that one. But once you have a path through all of that, you can go ahead. Then on, um, and then the other one is that between a block signal and a path signal, you want to make sure that there's at least room for one full train. So that is all I wanted to show in this one. Oh, no, 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 no. We have one more thing. Ah, man, up and down. We also need to go up and down because of course we need to go up and down. Damn, I almost forgot that. Let's uh, remove this package. I, it's going to be so annoying to look at this one when it's way out of season. All right. When you go up and down the slopes, trains cannot, do not like these intersections. They really need to be uh, the four ramps, the ramp four. So that is the middle, middle of the ground. And if you build a track from here, yeah, and then we drag it all the way up here, and I'll drag it in here. What you're seeing is the curvature means that it actually leaves the ground here, and also on top, if I continue it upwards, it'll actually dip into the ground because it'll try to sort of go continuous. So what I always do is I always take it one closer, and then I start it from here as well. If you start it here, then it will have like the right the right um, vector, yes. The right vector go parallel to the intersection. And then it's only this part, the smallest of intersection that will gape, gape a bit here. Likewise, on the up, uh, on the downward slope, I will do this one. We'll just call this a bonus, then it doesn't matter. It's at it was, I was already wrapping up there. And I'll do the same here. It clips slightly, but it only clips slightly. And that's what I'm aiming for, I'm only, aiming for a very slight clipping, no more than that. Uh, otherwise you will have it sort of uh, do a do f fly out over here if you build it closer. So this is how I always do it. Every time there's an up or a down transition in uh, in horizontality, I guess, then, uh, then I will always do these small intersections. And that, my friends, is all I have time for in this episode. So I hope you have enjoyed this. It went a bit longer than I thought, but we had like this amazing discovery about the diagonal parts, how you can use the, the diagonal parts to cheat and make some uh, some corners with some like this. So hope that was useful. Hope anything was useful here. Let me know in the comment section if there's more things you want me to go into when it comes to trains. Of course there is. And then uh, I'll see you guys either here on YouTube or maybe on Twitch where I am building this magnificent base. This is all going to be our train hub. And below we ground here, we have uh, we have trucks. So trucks also coming in. So yeah, it's it's going to be pretty damn big. Plus we're working on some turbo fuel, uh, modular turbo fuel factory. So we have many, many cool ideas that I'm building on Twitch. And of course, I'll bring it up back here for showcases and tutorials as this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take care, and as always, stay effective.